hi, I'm Charlie Collins and I am here chatting with Milky. Congratulations on a great new body of work with Undone. It's like such Thank a great you. collection of songs. Obviously, you know, it's following up your debut, which scored like an Air Award, Aria noms, like did crazy well. Uh, did you kind of feel any pressure going into making this body of work and were there any kind of like differences in how you approached them both? No, there wasn't any pressure. I, I just, I was excited to um, explore like my sound even more. Like uh, Snow Pine was just very uh, organic and, you know, every, everything was super raw. And I was, I, I was, I was discovering myself as a, as a solo artist and as, as a person. So it's, this is more just like a gradual shift into more of who I am and exploring all different sides of me. Um, so yeah, but in, in, in regards of pressure, no, nah, no pressure, just a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of sadness and a lot of fun at the same time. <laughs> That's a great juxtaposition. Yeah. And, um, obviously, like, the album was kind of born in the wake of the end of your marriage. How does songwriting and in particular like, creating uh, Undone help you, like, process and navigate what's going on in your life? Music is just, it is 100% therapy. So mm-hmm. that, you know, writing is how I deal with things. Um, yeah. It's also a thing where I can't, I, I mean, if, if you know, if you've heard the record, everything is so brutally honest. So I can't, um, you know, make something into another story or kind of downplay things. Everything I write is just pure verbal vomit and coming straight from within. It's like if I could vomit out my heart. I, well, I feel like I kind of did, to be honest. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it's just, oh, it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. And so you scrapped like the first kind of like iteration uh, yeah. of the album, which kind of also uh, reminds me of like uh, Miley Cyrus. Sorry, I can talk about Miley Cyrus for days. Oh I don't know why. Yeah. But, um, oh, I do know why because I love her. But anyway, yeah. um, and it kind of because she uh, she like lost her house in a fire, went through a divorce, yeah. and kind of like the album that she was working on, she kind of like scrapped and reworked into like her most yeah. recent one. Um, yeah. and I just kind of found there were like a few parallels there. But anyway, my tangent, my Miley tangent stuff. Oh my God. Go, but, go. Um, what kind of prompted like that switch up and like kind of reworking the record? Um, yeah. So I, I had the record done and I was super proud of it. I yeah. really loved it. But it was just, it was more of a thing where I, I just, I felt like I had more to give. I had more to say. I wanted to even be more vulnerable and honest. Um, it, it, it was just, I think I'm like, I, I know that there's so much more in me and yes normally you just be like well I'll just save it for the, the the third record but it was still stuff that I wanted to say about this storyline of my life and and so it was just a decision and it was a tough decision to make because I'm sure you know as an when the album's done and everyone is getting release dates ready you know the label the team and I was just like I think I can do better and yeah. do you guys all trust me to rewrite half of this record because I just really feel strongly about this and it was so you know it was so amazing to have that support from the label and the team and they were it was because I was so nervous but they were all just so trusting and it was it was quite rare and beautiful that we kind of all went on this journey together as well you know it it kind of makes the bond even stronger Yeah. yeah but yeah I'm so glad I did and I also got to that's when I was open to the idea of collaborating as well so um yeah so I started to collaborate and then that kind of brought out even more um sounds inside to myself and yeah. and, and I'm so proud of what I've got now it's just like it feels like it feels like me and it, it, yeah speaking of collab- your collaborators you know you collaborate with some amazing amazing artists how do you think that they helped you kind of bring the body of work to where you wanted it so Xavier Dunn Mm -hmm. who I wrote Backseat Valentine with he he was like you know he's one of my good friends and um he's just like you know you have all these beautiful like heartbreaking songs and that's so about what you do but also I know you and you're a bit of a crazy bitch and you love to party and have fun and he's like I would love to do a song like that with you and I was like, yes. And we literally wrote this song in like an hour or something. It just came out and it was so much fun because it was just not, we didn't overthink things. It was just like, let's go this, this, yeah, woo. Yeah, it. <laughs> and it was, it was so fun. And I've never written a song like that. I don't have a song like that. So that was super fun. And even writing with a uh, Japanese wallpaper, Gab, who I adore. Um, it, it was same thing. Like I love, I'm such a fan of his work and um, I love the sounds that he pulls. And so 
that was really fun just kind of working with him and and combining our sounds together which was really fun and you know it's just like it's it's just bringing out sides of yourself that I maybe don't know how to do on my own so someone else kind of comes in and and yeah, yeah exactly you know yeah. so you can get you can get comfortable and I know especially not so much with writing but musically sometimes I tend to play it safe in terms of chords and structure and everything you know because I kind of am more about the song so I'm thinking about the lyrics and the melody so it's nice to work with someone like Gab who is totally the opposite and thinks about the music in that sense so yeah it was it was a whole lot of fun and Jared of course like that you know we've been friends for ages and so it was so nice just to work together it's like we've known each other for like 12 years and it was like why are we just doing this now (laughs) (laughs) again I'm I'm such a fan of what he does as well and he's got such a beautiful gentle way of writing and just as a person he's just so gentle and warm and so hit the lights was again like him bringing out us bringing out I guess those sides of each other which was really nice yeah so beautiful yeah one of the other super exciting things about this record is that you took on the role of producer on a few songs which is pretty cool yeah Um, what made you want to like step into that role and is that something you think you'll continue to do with future projects yeah you look I just I think I uh I always have such a vision of what I want things to sound like and so it was, it was, it was cool. It was like a, I don't know, a little high five for myself that I could, you know, be in control and not freak out. And it's, it's more about also just like, I knew what I wanted and I knew what it to sound like and no one else can reiterate that besides myself. So I might as well yeah. just do it, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Great. Um, and so, you know, the tower track is like quite an emotional moment within like, well, a sea of emotional moments. Um, yeah. It was also produced by your ex-husband, which I imagine could have been quite, you know, an experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. can, you kind of, can you tell us a bit about like that, you know, like yeah. that, that experience? Yeah, of course. So when I wrote Undone, I, um, the, the, the production, all I could think of was my ex-husband. Yeah. I'm such a fan of his work. Like, and we're, we're, I'm, we're friends. It's like, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're on good terms. It's not like, I fucking hate you, but can you produce a song? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So and it, it was just funny because the first thing he did, he had to first make sure the song wasn't about him. It's so, true. and he was all in the clear with that because Undone is actually not about him. Yeah. It was, it was so nice. And I, I, I just sent him literally my vocal and acoustic guitar and he built the whole track with just with that and I and I when I got it back just hearing literally like the first chords I'm just like oh he knows he just got it he knew like yeah. and I'm so I'm so glad it was nice it was nice to like you know because he um produced and and recorded Snow Pine and so it's nice to have a part of him still on this next record I mean yeah, yes absolutely. most of the record is about him but <laughs> <laughs> but it's still nice it's nice that I can have a record about him but still also have him on the record as well yeah. working with me and it, it's it's nice I I really I've appreciated it so much and I just love what yeah, he did so yeah and like the album is so beautiful like lyrically sonically and you know it's just great I was listening to it again oh, and I was like, oh, oh it's so- <laughs> um, but you know it also kind of like pushes up against like the sound that we've heard from you before so how did you kind of like arrive at the the sonic realm that this album exists within I think it's just a progression again of yeah, me like, like oh. yeah it's just organic. Yeah. it wasn't it wasn't thought about it wasn't like oh okay I need I want to make a record sounding like this it was yeah. just honestly it's just I think no matter what the music just ju- like serves the song and it's never something that's really overthought about it's not like oh, okay I need something sounding like this or I need this it's just like this is the song and let's just serve the song whatever it needs and just kind of go with it and go on the journey yeah, that. yeah. it's such, that's such yeah. a great and, way of putting it as well yeah yeah <laughs> so which three songs from the album would you play to someone who would like never heard your music to make them an instant diehard fan oh it's a hard one that's a hard one because yeah. I mean me my favorite songs are like the really sad like <laughs> fucking depressing songs but I don't know if that would make maybe just make them want to go cry in a corner not necessarily make them a fan um I, you know what song I really really love mm-hmm. is is Skyline that's actually one of my favorite songs on the record I think I don't know it's just even recording that song it was just something really magical in the room and 
I, I love the dynamic of it. And, and and the song is also, you know, really personal to me about, you know, growing as a person and not feeling like just a puppet on a string for people. And, you know, a lot of my life I, I felt like I was that. So I really love that. I mean, I really, I do, uh, oh, are you even listening? I really like that one as well. That I don't know, just the feel of that. It kind of, yeah, I don't know. I just... It's, I can't describe that, but I just like that one. And, and back to Valentine, maybe, I don't know, because it's just fun and it's like the other side of myself and it's like, oh, okay, she actually has fun. <laughs> she doesn't just sit and cry in the dark. I mean, my personal advice is listen to the whole <laughs> top to one and back to front. Ah, oh, just oh, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but is there like a particular line or lyric from the album that you find will get stuck in your head more often than not? Like it's the one that's always humming up there or maybe a line that you're most proud of? There's definitely a line. <laughs> I don't know if I'm proud of it, but in November it's um, do you still call me a wife or the girl that fucked your life? <laughs> But I don't know why I just it's one of those songs I never ever thought of ever would ever see the light of day because it is so personal and I'm like, I really said that in a song. Yeah. And everyone's gonna hear that. I yeah. But I don't know. Um uh, yeah, I can't think of at the time, but I mean, even Lovers to Strangers, you know. Um I I wrote that song when I found out my ex-husband had a new girlfriend and I saw her photo on on his screensaver and so and I remember going home and just bawling my eyes out like I don't know why it was just a thing of like I, I knew it was going to be the last time we'd ever we would ever hang out yeah yeah um, and, and and everything had changed like mm-hmm. we we were we were together for 10 years and then all of a sudden we're literally like strangers and so and I remember just writing that first line like seeing knowing that he had a new girl and it's like I think it's time I let you go I've got to cut the rope because you're tied to someone new mm-hmm. And just that, it's just like, yeah, I've got to let go of this because we're no longer tied or bonded together or anything. Uh, we yeah. like, we're kind of strangers. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so heavy. It's so um. heavy. It's like a, a, a casual Tuesday morning. Wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love it, though. Love a good practice. Some breakfast talk. <laughs> uh, so you've got some headline shows coming up, which is super exciting, some festival sets too. Uh, what's in store for audience members attending these shows? Well, I have rehearsals today, so I don't quite know what's in store. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I'm just I'm so excited to play these songs live. You know, I've never played most of them live, so I'm I'm just as excited to play these songs and and I'm just going to keep it as much as me as possible. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't know, but it's, it's me. I'm in store. I've got a great new band. So okay. there's a, there's a band in store. There's yeah. some songs. In store. <laughs> there might be tears in store because I haven't sung all these songs live. So I could just have an actual literal breakdown in the middle of my set. But I mean, crying's nice. Crying's nice, right? It's like, it's a release. Exactly. You need yeah, it. as long as it's not the ugly crying on stage. <laughs> Just like a cute little tear. Just like yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. Like. <laughs> and so how important is uh, performing live to you in terms of like making that in-person connection with your audiences who resonate with your music? It's so important. Like it, it, it means so much to me to connect with the audience like it's there's no better feeling than when you come off stage and then someone just tells you how um your song has helped them or saved their life or changed their life like it really it's there's no other feeling like it it's because that's what that's why I do music you know I do I, I do I do it as a as a thing of, of self-therapy but also to yeah. help more people and so and and I love that you know even like you could think like a song a song that I write is so personal to me but to know that someone else out there is going through the exact same thing. It makes you feel like you're not alone as well. It's like a thing of like, they're not alone. I'm not alone. What you're going through, other people go through like you're, and you will be okay and vice versa, you know? So, and I love, I love that feeling. It's just like, we're all kind of doing life together and experiencing a lot of the same things. I just happen to write about it. (laughs) I love that. So lovely. Johnny Cash and Patsy Cline. Um, I I learned how to write songs through Johnny Cash um, and I learned how to sing through Patsy Cline, you know. So, yeah, they're my ultimate heroes. Oh, Bruce Springsteen. 
I grew up obviously on a lot of old country music. That's where my roots are. And so, I mean, uh, Harvest, Neil Young was a huge album. Um, probably one that was in the last maybe six years was A Deeper Understanding by The War on Drugs. Yeah. Because um, I just, I used to listen to a lot of old music and I never really listened to much new stuff. And then I remember I heard that record and I was just like, this is the perfect record. Um, so that album definitely um, impacted me a lot too. Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind because I love that movie and I think that would be really cool because it's so kind of out there and emotional and I think I could write some really great sad songs for that. I'm going to say Miley Cyrus just because she's such a bad bitch and she's really yeah. kind of chill now and she just doesn't, like, she's just doing what she wants to do. Yeah. Blue by Leanne Rhymes. Nice. Yeah, yeah. has that yodel in it. I remember I was like 12, I think, when I started singing that and I was like, this is fun. I'm yodeling. <laughs> uh, Leanne Rhymes. Yeah. Oh, I reckon it would have to be um, James Taylor and Carol King. Nice. Yeah, that was that was very that was the best show, yeah. Ever yeah. Been to, hands down. Alison Krauss, forget about it. Spice Girl. Sad Spice. <laughs> emo <laughs> Spice, Emo Spice. <laughs> I just played Brixton Academy with Gang of Views and that was pretty memorable. So uh, that is fresh on my mind and so that one is memorable. And that's why it's actually why I got this tattoo. This was like my Brixton Academy. Uh, I played Brixton Academy so I'm going to tattoo okay. myself. Yeah. Love it. Oh, I'm going to say Taylor Swift. Yes, that's my answer. My Is favorite. it actually? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think she really, she's done country, she's done pop, she's done rock, and now she's doing yeah. folk. And I think so yeah. many, you know, I think it's, mm -hmm. she's paving way. She's not pigeonholing herself like exactly. ever. And I think that's and, so and also like the, like the behind the deal, behind the scenes stuff she's done with like Spotify. For exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's stuff like the business side of it as well. It's like yeah. such a big thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand up for yourself always. Yeah, that's I think good. that's something I've learned. It's like I, I I just can be such a yes person and kind of do what people expect or want. And so I'm learning still that it's like okay, it's okay to stand up for yourself and it's okay to put yourself first. And so yeah. That's what I would tell myself. Oh. And that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> I remind you in a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be like, you said it up, you put yourself first. You even do it. I grew up in a musical family and my mom always played guitar and my uncles were always jamming and I used, used to love just listening to them. And then I think I grew up in Tamworth, so I was constantly yeah, yeah. Um, at gigs and just, I don't know, just going to gigs. And I was just like, I think I really want to do that. And so I started doing it. <laughs> I think when I started when I was nine. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I'm happy you started doing it because your music's great. <laughs> oh, stop.